Speaking of uh, moving on, let's, uh, uh, as we mentioned, we have a great agenda tonight. And so we'd love to welcome in our, uh, our very special guest tonight. It is Senator Linda Greenstein. Senator Greenstein, are you there? Can you hear me? We can. Okay, terrific. Welcome, well, welcome to the South Jersey. Thank you. And I really appreciate your inviting me to speak with you tonight. Uh, well, it's our um, pleasure. If, 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 I'm sorry, if you'll indulge me, I just, for the benefit of our audience, I just have to read off a few of, of your kudos. And there, again, there's, there's so many to list. I actually have to read. Normally we like to wing these off the top of our heads, but uh, mm -hmm. Senator Green, Greenstein was elected to the Senate in uh, 2010. She served in the legislature uh, uh, for 10 years prior to that. Um, so um, uh, she's the first woman to represent the 14th legislative district in the Senate. She's the assistant majority leader in the state Senate. She's chairwoman of the Law and Public Safety Committee. Uh, uh, very important to us. She's vice chair of the Environment and Energy Committee and all that they do for us. Um, she's a member of the Senate Budget and Appropriations Committee, a member of the Joint Committee on Public Schools. She's done a ton to decrease the state's resilience on fossil fuels. Um, she's huge on, on helping our renewable portfolio. She has a whopping 96% score from the League of Conservation Voters. And again, very important to this crowd. She's the primary Senate sponsor of the Green Amendment, and she's the primary sponsor of the Low Embodied Carbon Concrete Leadership Act. Um, so uh, with that, uh, again, we, we give a big South Jersey welcome to you, Senator Greenstein. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I've always been passionate about protecting the environment and by extension, the health and safety of current and future generations of New Jerseyans. As vice chair of the Senate Environment and Energy Committee, I've worked, as you said, to decrease the state's reliance on fossil fuels and have advocated for making clean and renewable energy a priority for New Jersey. Increasing availability, accessibility, and use of electric vehicles, offshore wind, and solar energy. I helped lead the charge for New Jersey to rejoin a regional coalition of states working cooperatively to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I am committed to enacting policies that reduce uh, impact on the environment and prepare for the effects of climate change in order to make this state a safer and healthier place for you and your families. I continue to make environmental progress a top priority by expanding workforce development for cleaner or for clean energy jobs, ensuring access to clean drinking water and planning for more extreme weather and climate change related disasters. Thank you again for having me here tonight. I look forward to taking some of the questions you may have for me. Thank that's you. So, that's so great. Thank you, Senator. And and uh, Isla and I are going to pepper you with a few. Uh, but real quick, you know, in, in this, in your response, think of it in the spirit of we're not just saying, you know, what are you going to do for us? It's how can we help? You know, you've got a coalition here. Uh, you got foot soldiers. So so uh, I guess we'll start with what, what are your priorities in this next term? And, and, oh, and congratulations on on, on your reelection. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always glad to have that over with. So. <laughs> okay. Um, well, in terms of priorities on the climate front, uh, my priorities include creating state and county climate change hazard, hazard prevention and mitigation plans, creating a state equipment purchase and installation assistance program in EDA, requiring manufacturers of electric vehicles to establish and implement electric vehicle battery management plans in order to prioritize the reuse and recycling of used electric vehicle batteries prior to their disposal, establishing statewide targets to reduce the disposal of organic wastes in landfills and creating an office of sustainability to develop and implement environmental sustainability measures in state buildings. Um, we're looking at ways in which we can decrease emissions from the transportation sector. As we know, lots of money is going to be coming into the state for transportation and uh, decreasing emissions. This is the perfect time to look at decreasing emissions, whether that is by uh, piloting electric buses at our schools, encouraging the use of public transportation, or converting gas-powered trucks and public sector fleets 
to zero emission replacements. Um, as local leaders, this is wonderful to see what a large coalition you have here. I wasn't aware uh, of that. You all have the ability to lend legislators your insight and su to suggest initiatives or ideas that you're working on at the local level and rally support for these causes. I encourage you uh, to let us know of any ideas you have or your own local legislators too. Um, and encourage everyone to, su to support sustainability uh, and to really get involved with our various environmental bills. In many cases, people like you are behind those bills and we can use your help in any way possible. Uh, if you'd like to know more about that, just call my office or your local legislators, but we'd love to get your help on these uh, various issues. That, that's so cool. And, and what I really like, just looking at your portfolio of legislation, is your, your open innovation. And, and that brings us to the, the Low Carbon Concrete Leadership Act. Um, we, we heard from Dr. Adams in the, in the pre-meeting uh, from NJIT talk about, you know, the, the many benefits of, of concrete, but it's kind of a, a mundane sounding thing when there are some, forgive me, sexier things you know, when we talk about, you know, uh, uh, climate innovation. How did, how did you get involved in sponsoring this legislation? Well, um, as many of you know, now Senator Zwicker, I think, was the original person working on this. And he got it through a committee in the assembly before he left there. And I had signed on just because I saw the bill. It looked good. It, it sounded like something that would be helpful to the environment. So I signed on. And very frankly, I thought, well, Andrew will get it all gussied up there in the assembly. And then when we get it in the Senate, it will be easy. Well, that isn't the case. Uh, right now, um, everybody's coming forward. I'm not even sure whether they came forward in the assembly, but I'm having a meeting on the bill tomorrow. Uh, and we're, we have the various sectors, you know, the building trades people, um, the environmental people, and pretty much whoever wanted to come to the meeting, we're doing it as a Zoom, um, just to try to see if we can work out. Uh, various people have put in amendments. And at this point, I, I got them very close to, you know, the end here. And I'm hoping that I can do it. I mean, if we don't do it now, we'll do it in the next term, but I'm really going to try to do it now. One of the things I don't want to do, very frankly, is get the building trades upset. And we're trying to accommodate them in some of the changes that we're making. Um, but so far, I don't think we've got an agreement. So I'll see how this meeting goes tomorrow. I would, however, like to ask if, is it Dr. Adams? Yeah, from Dr. NJIT? Matt Adams. Yep. Doctor, if you have a, a way to reach him, I would love to talk to him tomorrow before that meeting sure. and see what he thinks of the bill and of the amendments. It could be very helpful. Definitely. You know, um, and, and uh, I, I love how you're, you know, you're, you're, you want to make sure you have that coalition, which it sounds like you're, you're mm -hmm. in the process of building, which is awesome. I, I think of New Jersey, the Garden State, but man, do we use a massive amount of concrete, right? Uh, uh, all I our highways, that. bridges, tunnels, sports stadiums. Um, and it's not even the new green stuff, like our wind turbines and our EV charging stations, they're all going to need concrete, right? Let's stuff has to stay up. And, you know, and, and so uh, lowering the reduction, you know, lowering the emissions from that, it, it, you know, it's going to be huge. So, so well, especially that's, that's with all of the new money coming into the state, I imagine we'll use more than ever. Right. And it's going to be a very important issue. So, um, Unfortunately, I, I just got it at the last minute and I'm trying my best to work it out. And I, I just hope I can do it before the end of lame duck. That's, That's awesome. my goal. That's what I'm trying for. Thank you so much for your, for yes. your work on that. And, Thank and, you. and Isla, I'll, I'll turn, you, turn it over to you for the Green Amendment part. Hello, Senator. Thank you Hello. very much for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. As um, Sean mentioned, um, we're definitely, um, you know, foot soldiers here. I am particularly interested in the Green Amendment, and um, I've been working a lot with David Pringle. I know that he's on this evening. Um, but I wanted to ask you, um, you know, why did you decide to be a primary sponsor of the Green Amendment? Well, I think. Um, trying to remember back, it was a while back. Um, I believe that Maya Van Rossum came to speak to me, gave me a copy of her book, and David too, and they sold me on the idea of this. It, it seemed very simple. It seemed like something that people really could support, but like everything else that seems simple, as I said before, mm -hmm. it isn't. And um, 
you know, certainly uh, we it, we've gotten a lot of people to sign on. I have not talked to most of those people. I know David has, and I'm not really sure if they really have taken the time to understand the bill. Uh, hopefully they'll come out and they'll help us in a more active way because we're going to need that. Um, I don't think that we've gotten leadership of either house on board yet. Uh, I did set up a meeting. We had Maya and a couple of other people were at this meeting that I set up with uh, the former Senate center, I don't know, Senate president, not former actually, he still is, right. uh, Senate President Sweeney. Um, and he was very attentive. He spent a lot of time listening, but didn't come to the point of making a commitment. Um, I do know that um, Senator Smith the, from the Environmental Committee has told me that he's going to hear the bill in committee. I think he said it was going to be in the new session rather than in lame duck. So again, we've had that before. We've gotten it through a committee. Maybe now we can bring it to that next step of, of getting it done. Um, I even went with Maya. We spoke at a conference down in Nashville last year. I think it was the National uh, Conference of Environmental Legislators. And we, you know, we spoke about it. And I know she's going around the country and really making a big push for it. I understand New York has um, gone ahead and, and um, passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A simple amendment, or not even an amendment, just a statement that um, the protection of the environment is a right that people have. Theirs is only a couple of words. Ours would actually amend the Constitution, so it has maybe a little bit more. Um, but it's great to see New York do it, uh, and I know Pennsylvania has had it, and I believe Montana, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, those two states, and Pennsylvania has used it. That's the thing that I find most interesting. They've they've used it. Ab um, absolutely, yeah. Um, in fact, the person who was the chief justice of the Supreme Court, Ron Castile, who I believe used it in his court decision, he was an old colleague of mine at the Philadelphia DA's office. Uh, <laughs> I used to work there at the time. He did many years ago, and uh, before he went to the court, and you know, it was good to see that he. He stood up for that. He's actually an extremely conservative person. And I think he would be very conservative on the environment as well. But he decided that that was important and he made use of that amendment. So that's would... that's wonderful. That's great. Um, I think you kind of already answered my questions because I was going to ask, you know, what would you say to co colleagues or supporters who aren't, you know, currently backing the Green Amendment? I think you addressed that a little bit. And then also, is is the Green Amendment going to be addressed at all during the lame duck, or is that going to probably be not until the January timeframe? You know, I think, but I, I, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think Senator Smith said that he was going to do it in later, like January, and okay. not in lame duck. But I'm not a hundred percent sure if he, if that's still his intention. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time in answering our questions and your support of the Green Amendment. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, just uh, to go full circle on the conversation, uh, let us know how we can help. Right. So reach out. Well, the, one, the one way you can help now, if you have the information, is a contact number for that professor, unless you want to get it to me after sure. the meeting. Sure. Because it, it, we 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 we'll definitely get it to you right, right away, and and, um, uh, and even with the green amendment, if it does, you know, if it doesn't pass, go forward in green uh, in lame duck, January, you know, let, you can uh, we can strategize with you. However, we can help. You know, we, I think I think as an organization, we we are uh, committed to supporting it. So, thank you so much. Well, yeah. I definitely can use that help. So, so, so uh, you've been so gracious with your time, Senator Greenstein, and, and uh, also, uh, you know, with with uh, the the issues that you support. You know, that's really. What's the core of our mission here? And so we'll we'll, uh, we'll let you uh, we'll let you get back to your evening uh, there. Um, <laughs> and and uh, thank you again. Thank you all, and I hope to get to meet all of you in the Likewise. near future. Likewise, Bye have now. a great night. You too. Okay.